So sitting right behind me is my 2002 Chevy Astro van that I've been working on for the past couple months. I plan on getting this thing ready to hit the road and travel across America with my girlfriend and we're gonna be living out of this. Like I'm gonna build a bed and everything inside. I basically just wanted to give you guys like a quick update of what I've done in the van so far. It might not seem like a lot, it's not like a finished van tour, but I've made some pretty decent progress and actually all last week my van was in the shop getting some pretty serious things done to it I had to get this whole suspension replaced and then they also had to like remove the engine and get some fuel injectors taken out and put some new ones in I'm sure you guys don't care about the suspension all that you just want to see a van tour so let's get into it all right, so I figured I would start up front in the cockpit where all the action is going to be going down. So, of course, that is the steering wheel. If you guys have never seen one of those things before. This thing right here, this is what holds my phone, right? I got this for $20 at Walmart, and I'm sure most of you guys are familiar with phone holders for, like, using your GPS and stuff. But the cool thing about this one is since it plugs in and you can see the wire goes underneath right there you don't have to plug any wires into your phone and just by the back of your phone touching this right here it charges your phone and that's actually very useful especially during van life when you want to have everything charged as much as possible also two things about driving a, at least a 2002 chevy astro that i found a little bit annoying one being when i'm like driving obviously the doors closed and my damn knee is always bumping in i don't know if you can see it it's always locking and unlocking the doors and uh, for some reason they just put the lock and unlock button right there where your leg is going to be leading up against. That's one thing that's a little bit annoying and the other one is the cup holders. These things can't hold anything. It can't hold an iced coffee, it can't hold my Yeti, it can't hold a little small can of Pepsi. I don't know what they designed these things to hold but it can't hold much. Okay, so as you can see, it's unfinished, but I've made a lot of progress. I stripped everything out. This had three rows of seats. They all smelled terrible. The person who owned this van previously before me, they smoked cigarettes. They, like, chain-smoked. I found probably over 50, like, half-smoking cigarettes inside this van. I don't know why she only smoked half. If you're going to smoke cigarettes, smoke the whole thing. I don't know. Anyway, the carpet was nasty. Like, nasty. So a couple things about the floor. I insulated it with Reflectix, which I understand is not the highest R value. If you wanna get the most out of your Reflectix, you wanna build a barrier wall, as in the Reflectix, like a pocket of air, like a space, and then whatever you're trying to insulate from. But I really wanted to use it more as a sound barrier rather than an insulation because I was actually originally gonna go without insulating the floor at all. Yeah, so I decided with Reflectix for the sound barrier and it's done a really good job. When I was driving this as just like a metal tin can, it was super loud. Every single pebble you can hear banging up against the bottom of the van or all that stuff. So it's actually a lot quieter uh, driving. I think I used four or five two by four, two feet by four feet long pieces of plywood to lay down. Um, I didn't use any screws or any nails, all right? I don't have a high IQ. There was a high possibility that if I was going to screw all this stuff in, I would like screw a nail, uh, screw a screw right into my gas tank, and I wasn't trying to do that. So everything is um, adhesived down and I made sure I use some like safe adhesive because I'm gonna be sleeping in this van and I don't wanna be breathing in chemicals. Then we chose this nice color vinyl. Uh, we never did any kind of vinyl flooring before. We never laid any kind of click and lock flooring at all in our life. So it was our first time doing it. So of course we made mistakes. One mistake we did was we didn't, I think scatter it is the correct word. Basically, we lined up all the pieces so like the ends all meet at the same point and you're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to have the ends meeting at different points so it kind of locks more firmly and you don't see like a straight line going across the floor. You live and learn. People on Reddit were trying to tell me I should take everything out and redo it, which I understand that's probably like the proper thing I should do. But at the end of the day, I'm kind of lazy. I think it looks all right anyway. I know I did it wrong. I'll admit that, but I think it looks all right. Okay, I made sure I, I insulated the wheel wells because you gotta insulate everything. So I used Reflectix, as you can obviously see. I'm grabbing it with my hand right now. That is Reflectix. So that's that, pretty simple. Probably the easiest thing to insulate was the wheel wells. But moving on, this looks a little different, right? Might not see this in every single van. Basically what I did was I took like little two by fours and I 
was able to like find little like holes inside the van already, didn't make any new holes, and I was able to drill screws into those holes, sturdily locking these two by fours, kind of just making framework so I can lay the insulation. Now this is all gonna be covered with walling. I'm thinking like a vinylish kind of wall that you just lay down. And then this right here is, oh damn, I'm gonna forget the name of it. It's like one inch thick polyesterine insulation. I don't know. but. It works well because right now the roof of my van is not insulated yet because I have to get the max air fan installed and it's crazy how hot it is. Right now it's like 80 degrees out and it's burning to the touch. I think I can, I might be able to cook an egg on this thing. It's upside down so that wouldn't work but, and then if I do it over here, obviously nothing. Touch over here. Yep. Pretty damn hot. Not as hot as the ceiling, but pretty hot, but absolutely cool to the touch. And that's the goal for insulation, right? You just want to keep everything cool on the inside of the van. Yeah, so the next thing I want to show you guys is the privacy curtains I have installed. It's extremely DIY, but uh, that's kind of the theme of my whole van. So let me show you guys that. All right, so this is how it's set up when I'm driving. I got some Velcro straps. Works like a charm, keeps it in place. I drive with the windows wide open because right now my air condition is broken. Need to get it fixed. It keeps it very minimal and I can look through my back windows does a great job these things were like a couple bucks at Lowe's and as you can see up here this is like the rods that you know the curtains are on it's my beautiful little strategy it doesn't look that great I have to use two piece of wooden poles and then they're on magnetic hooks holy shit that magnet is hot as hell god damn I don't like how it really looks with these two poles but using one pole going across it just didn't work that well for me because it was like leaving too much dead space up top and it wasn't it wasn't working right and this has worked the best so far maybe i'll change it i don't know but let me let me show you guys how it looks like in night mode all right so basically this is night mode behind me you can still kind of see inside the van from the passenger window and the driver window so what i'm going to do is i already bought these velcro strips that can hold up to like 15 pounds of weight very unnecessary basically i'm gonna put one piece of velcro on each side of the outer part of the curtain and then another piece of Velcro on each side of the walls over here. And basically what's going to happen is I'm going to be able to just Velcro the curtains to the sides. And no one would be able to see in from the front. No one can see in through the sides. And uh, we can have our privacy. Okay, one last thing I wanted to show you guys, kind of like a sneak peek into my next video, um, is this battery that I bought. This is a Jackery 240. Jackery is the brand, 240 is the model. It's like the mid-size model. There's a smaller one, and there's a bigger one. And then I also bought right here. I'll give you guys five seconds to guess what this is right here. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. All right, it hasn't been five seconds, but it is a solar panel. So that opens up, and that very, very easily connects. Actually. I'm going to make a video on this. Highly, highly recommend Jackery. I'm in no way, shape, or form being sponsored by them or paid or they're asking me to say this. Not at all. Me and my girlfriend have still been charging our phones on this every single night while we sleep. And uh, it works very well. So I'm going to make a video on this probably tomorrow. So make sure you guys check that out.